Welcome to the Dr. Budgill podcast. This is a really exciting one for me. Um, as most of you know, I'm a huge, huge music fan. And um, I'm blessed to have Matthew Whitaker here, who's just a, I mean, a polymath beast of a musician, incredible <laughs> pianist. Um, I've been following Matthew's story for a couple of years now. And uh, it's just such an honor to have you here, man. I'm so excited to hear your story. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> hey, happy birthday, by the way. I know you just turned 21, man. That's a yeah, big milestone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're going to, I mean, kind of bounce all over the place. I know, yeah. um, you know, the All Arts Artist uh, in Residence documentary mm -hmm. came out on your birthday, mm -hmm. which was amazing. I mean, thank everyone you. should really watch this. Not only did I learn so, so much about you, but I have so many questions about that whole, you know, your interest in film scoring and, you know, just how someone like yourself is basically who plays all genres of music and is, you know, obviously most, most, mostly jazz, I would say is your primary focus, but I hear you playing classical, and, you know, in the documentary, you're playing stuff for theater. It's just, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. But how, you. how, how did film scoring become something that was of interest to you? Uh, I think really just hearing about it over time, you know, growing up listening to a lot of music, you know, um, whether it be on the radio or on YouTube and stuff like that. And, um, you know, eventually I just started, you know, just learning from other um, people via YouTube, like how they compose things using a DAW uh, or a, 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 a digital audio workstation. And um, which then led to me learning about how someone who is blind is able to do that. And, you know, <laughs> everything just really went from there. So like really from just listening and researching, really. Are there any other blind composers for film scores that you know of? Um, I am not sure off the top of my head um but um i'm sure they are um, you know what one but, of the things that i found amazing yeah. about and this is a, a kind of like just a question for someone i guess who's somewhat naive but mm -hmm. when you're watching a film is it kind of like listening to an audiobook you know like mm. are you yeah um i guess that works in, in 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 one way or another because like you know you have the dialogue then you have music and and i know some audio books that have music with them so yeah <laughs> um um as long as you know everything is coming across audibly you know i'm good and well what helps is that it, uh sorry uh what helps with that <laughs> is um audio description which is basically um just uh, a uh, a description of what's happening on screen, so that uh, so that a blind individual can really know what's happening visually, along with you know what's happening already in the film. Yeah, it's uh, one of the things I thought was so wild in the documentary. It you know, there's like basically you're working with various folks. Um, you know, there's mm -hmm. someone from theater, and there's a, someone who's a composer. And there's this one scene, I forget exactly who the person was that you were working with, but she was basically just describing like a movie scene. She's like, just play along with this. You're sitting on a piano. Susie. Yeah. Or, Susie, or, yeah. Or, yeah, Susan Jacobs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so she was literally just describing Susan. a scene. Like there's a child running away and like, you know, it was like kind of a uh, a scene where, you know, your, your, your heart would be dropping and you're nervous and you're like, and she's like, just play what you're feeling. It's a, it's, it's a scene of, of, a, of a terrible, gruesome war and it's violent and... Oh no! Amazing. Sorry, that was um, that was Zane actually, uh, Zane March. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's because you really just—it's amazing. First, like you don't realize how much music actually captures the emotion of a scene, and then right. it was amazing how you could just literally, not even thinking about it, just started playing. Just go for it. Yeah, I mean that's the one like, thing. I mean, sorry. Um, I mean for me, uh, I just like that's the one thing I'm trying to get better at. Just going for it just having that 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 push just just to let it all out and not worry about oh uh, uh you know how's this sound how's that sound you know just just, just try it go for it see what happens but what are, what do you like what are your thoughts i mean you probably think so fast because you're just <laughs> a high level musician but 
is it like you know i know like just as i i like mess around with instruments and stuff and i've been playing music but not you know obviously at a very amateurish level but like you know like minor keys are like sad major keys are happy is any of that stuff going through your mind or is it just the all automatic um yeah i mean uh stuff like that uh i think about you know like major minor but you know it um really uh, i just go for it you, you know um uh, it, it, what helps is if I have like a layout of what's happening visually again, you know, going back to that, right. you know, if I have, okay, this person is doing this while this person is going to do this eventually in five seconds. So we need something that builds up from here to here. And I mean, it was literally like, a, but you were doing it instantaneously. She was, or I think whoever it was, was like, the child is about to run into like oncoming traffic. And like <laughs> you're playing along with that, like capturing the emotion of that instantly yeah but it's uh stuff like that really came into play when i um when i um i stored a film uh called star t uh, which is streaming on hulu um it came out a few weeks ago before the, the documentary but um um and what was happening was you know i was you know being told what was happening visually and i was able to write the music based on that what's happening it's a little girl, she's pulling out a big ball of light in a dollhouse. And she's, she's like holding a moon in her hand. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah. You, you, it, it, I mean, listen, I'm sure that was instantaneous and, and effort, effortless yeah, it was for fun. you too. As it was really fun. Everything is. Are, are you familiar with uh, um, Charlie Hunter? He just came out with an album with this guy named Sam Frybush and Jeff Clapp. It's an organ trio album. Uh, I'm not sure if I know that one. So it, it's interesting because Sam, I, I had Sam on my podcast a few episodes ago. Mm. He's an organ player. I, I love having B3 organs like by far oh, my man. favorite instrument. Yeah, like, same. B3 organ videos <laughs> are like just the best. Yeah, right. Um, so he came out with an album with Charlie Hunter and this drummer named Jeff Clapp. And one of the things that he said was he plays in a church, in like a Baptist church down in like South Carolina somewhere. Mm. And I know you play. You're, yep, you're Baptist as well. You're, yep. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and you run you run the church band pretty much right you're yeah uh, I'm minister of music so I I run that I also you know they work the choir and you know rehearse them and all that stuff. Well, a lot of that is spontaneous. A lot of that is improv improvised, right? Like really, yeah. Um, band. um, it really is improv in a way, especially you know, um, when it's like just you know, no music at all. It's just like, just. On the, like really just underscoring what's happening like you know you know in the service itself like like I said in the documentary you know it to really go from like like really calm to like really heavy uh, you know yeah. so it's, it, 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 it is really a part of in a way yeah but you know it's, it's funny because like all, in, in a baptist church it's it's always so like bluesy and jazzy and, yeah you know, all these great like seventh chords and you know it's, it's it really is like just jazz in the backdrop kind it of, is know? really and and it all started in the church so which is yeah. it, it really combines all the styles of music that we know so, so let, let's you know so just some of the things that i've obviously been researching your story and like you know learning a bit about you i know like this kind of all started well, just to take it back, you were you were pre you were born premature, like twenty four mm -hmm. weeks or so, and ultimately you had retinopathy of prematurity, which is you know, similar. Similar, Stephen Wonder has the same condition, right? Retinopathy of prematurity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know you were basically not supposed to really survive. Um, yeah, it was like a pretty gloomy time, I'm sure, for your parents, but somehow you made it through. And I know your parents were taking like a bunch of doctors, and the, the, everyone was seemed like they were just kind of like hopeless. And at some point, your mom and dad just said, you know what, like, we're just gonna, this is the reality, we're gonna live our lives. And they kind of took matters into their own hands. And like, you know, just tried to, to have for you to have as much as normal of a childhood as possible. And somehow, like three years old, you got like, a, your granddad gave you like a toy keyboard. And I think you everyone was like mesmerized by the fact that you could just mm. play. Yeah. Can, can you share a little bit of that? Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, it, it was hard growing up, <laughs> um, up until three, but, um, I mean, yeah. Uh, do you, re do you remember that? Do you remember playing that toy keyboard? I remember a little bit, you know, um, 
my uh, the stuff I don't remember, but right I do remember right, right, right playing with the keyboard. Um, and I also re- uh, remember taking uh, cross sector lessons at five. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that was a struggle too, like your parents finding you a teacher. Right. You and on, the right? stroll, yeah. Yeah, the stroll was really the um the 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 hardest thing, you know, finding the right stroll for me and, and, and like even you know, at the stroll I attended, you know, I was too young, but you know, they t- they took me in anyway and I became the you know, like the youngest to be in that stroll. And you're still in contact with your original piano teacher, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, Which I don't know. Great. Sixty minutes on the sixty minutes. Uh, I think it was like in 2020. It's like in the height of the pandemic. There mm. was a you were on sixty minutes, and there was a you know basically showcasing your talent. And your piano teacher was on there, and uh, it's she said like one of the coolest things I think I've ever, I've ever heard. Where you know I think whoever was interviewing her was saying um, you know it must have been like you know very challenging, and mm. you know kind of going through like teaching you and she said no it's actually i was much more nervous about it because she knew what a talent you were and like the responsibility of like grooming your talent so you could share it with the world like yeah. she felt the burden of like your you know how what an amazing talent you were even at that age he's obviously you know got something to offer to the world and so you want to you want to make that possible I thought that was pretty cool, and the fact that you guys are still in touch or still work. And do you guys still work together? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, we still work on classical repertoire and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's 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 always fun working with her. What 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 can anyone possibly teach you, man? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Look, like, I mean, it, it, it's it's always great to improve, you know. But what what I mean, you're so good. Like, what is like, what is Look, what, even what professionals get lessons every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys working on pieces or technique? Yeah, pieces, technique, um, you know, just overall like things like that. Um, you know, and you know, getting my braille music uh chops going. <laughs> um um because that is um challenging. Uh, especially so- uh, when you have to uh read with one hand, play with the other hand and yeah. switch over and Memorize both hands at the same time. Oh, yeah. I and mean, that was one thing she actually said she was very adamant about. Like, she's like, you need to learn how to read music. <laughs> and reading like Braille music is like, you know, much harder than reading re- regular music. And, uh, mm-hmm. but she was pretty hardcore about that, right? Because she said yeah. that's really going to allow you to get to the next level. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, who, who right now, like, you know, what, what do you listen to? Who inspires you? Like, do you, you know, what what kind of genres are you into? Do you listen to pop? Do you listen to mostly yeah, of jazz? course. I, I mean, as a composer and arranger, you know, it's always good to you know discover other styles of music. Um, and you know, lately, um, even while we're in the car driving, I'll just be you know shazamming songs that happen on the radio, and I just save them to my phone and listen to that and put it on shuffle. But really, um, um, I love all styles of music. Um, including, you know, for example, uh, metal. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, I know it's like re- really strange for me to say that, but I mean, I like it. There was a lot of links between metal and classical, actually. You yeah. Know, you hear, you hear, I mean, you really hear a lot of classical lines and like, you know, especially like exactly. the old, like Ingway Malmsteen and all those guys. So like when, when, I, when I was a kid, there's like a right. crazy virtuoso guitar players, but it's like these crazy classical licks that they're, sounds like they're playing you know yeah you know who uh loves combining a lot of styles dream theater i'm not familiar oh they're heavy metal band yeah um pod kind of um pod uh metal but 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 they love like combining like like other styles like uh jazz but there's but there's a one song where they literally like have like a old school piano solo thing like where the keyboardist is like this playing as if he was, you know, playing my, my test stride piano. Like, oh, wow. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's really interesting. I got to check it out, man. <laughs> I definitely going to check it out. So, you know, one of the things that I've been actually, like I was mentioning, like, I love like organ trio stuff. And yeah. I've been watching like a lot of your videos. I subscribe to your YouTube channel, which oh, I love. Oh, wow. Thank right? you. And um, dude, you're so good. Like it's, Thank like, you. it's, it's amazing. Like the feel, cause that's really, it's, it's so much feel with the organ and like you're really emoting so much. 
and it's hard to, I mean, it's, it's hard to do. And it's, how did you get so good at the organ? Did you like work with <laughs> Lonnie Smith or any like organ players? Really? I taught myself, honestly. Uh, Even the feet, my- like using the pedals? And yeah. Stuff? Um, I mean, for me, I understood it uh, pretty quickly, I guess, uh, because the layout of the pedals is literally just like a keyboard, except, you know, the distance between each pedal is, you know, different than the distance on it the keyboard because you know you need room for your feet and you don't want to like you know be like hitting two or more pedals at the same time mm-hmm. you know so the distance has to be you know a good you know for the pedals and and it was it was, it was this amount of me that just getting used to the feel of everything and um and just getting the coordination down with uh, the both hands and feet, and then you know learning the controls on the instrument, and that's the one thing I love, like the 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 amount of sound shaping you can do with the with the instrument, and even with other instruments, because for me, my I don't have a favorite, <laughs> but you know I I feel all of them have a unique character to them, like the piano and the keyboards and drums and percussion, so. So what is are the pedals like what like several octaves lower the like the lowest note on the keyboard? Uh so so on a Hammond normally you have from C1 to about C3. So you get like like two octaves of pedals. Um and uh depending on you know um the the origin you may find a unit that has pedals from C1 to D3, um, um, and even with pipe organs, you know, those can vary between, right, right, you know, different sizes and all that stuff, but generally, uh, uh, not since I had 10 on a ham and you get C to C. <laughs> gotcha. I, and is that what you play at church? Is it a ham and B3? Uh, at church, we have a XB3, which is Hammond's first digital um uh emulation of, of of a b3 or him and ordinary in general and it sounds pretty good um yeah but we use that and then i have my keyboard on top of the organ uh for key sounds and then i have my phone off to my right for controlling different things on my phone got it man talk, talk to me a little bit i know you're kind of you were on tour for a stretch um, yeah. But you're also going to school. What are you studying? I'm studying at Juilliard. It's my third year. And yeah. <laughs> so it's an, you're, you're an undergrad? Degree? Yeah. That's awesome, man. So I know, I know Wednesday Thank mornings you. is like kind of a little bit of downtime for you. Like decide, that's where you're kind of between between school and playing gigs and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so, t- t- so talk to me about like about your tour, what, uh, what you're promoting, your latest work. Yeah. So, so currently we are touring my latest album connections which just came out last summer and basically the album is really all about the connections i have with other artists and their connections with me and yeah um we've been touring it ever since the album came out and we are going to be doing a european tour uh in the summertime and we're going to be touring across the United States as well uh, in the summer and in fall, you know, close to Thanksgiving season. So I can't wait to see y'all. <laughs> yeah, man. Can't, I can't wait to come out and check you out. I know you're playing at Dizzy's this weekend. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, as of um, April 13th, uh, the show is uh, on April 14th. So, yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town, so I'm not going to make it. But I'll, I'm definitely going to catch you, man, when, when you are in New York, man. I got to, I got to see you live. It looks yes, like an amazing experience, man. Um, so when you're on tour, like what percentage is like, you know, like I see you have like all these keyboards behind you right now. Like, is that the same setup essentially you have like when you're on tour? Uh, kind of. Um, uh, usually right when we're on tour, I usually have a piano that's being rented and an organ that's being rented and, that is basically like a back-to-back setup, so I can easily just spin around or play both at the same time. Um, and on top of the piano, I would have a small keyboard that I would bring. Um, 
And yeah, um, and uh, as far as the rest of the band um, and me, uh, we either use either monitors or, or headphones or in-ears, depending on you know the backline and what they're providing for us. So yeah. Like, it's, the same it's, touring band? It's yes. Like, I was like, guitars, drums, and bass, right? Yep, and percussion. And percussion. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it sounds so full. You Thank know. you. I, mean, just, I, th- I think just the organ alone <laughs> sounds <laughs> so full. <laughs> right? It. Yeah. yeah man. But it's, it's a great band. It seems, it seems like you've kind of been with these same musicians for a pretty long time. Yeah, since the end of 2018, uh, a friend of mine, uh, or ours, <laughs> a friend of ours, uh, Nat Townsley, who was also a drummer, he introduced me to Marcos on guitar, Karim on bass, uh, and Isaiah on drums. And um, uh, last year, uh, right during the fall season, um, uh, we added uh, Ivan on, on percussion. And I've no, I, I've known Ivan since I was about like I think twelve years old, like twelve or thirteen years old. Um, so it was great to, you know, add him to the to the group. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, on tour, uh, 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 Johnny Steele will also be on drums as well. So um, it's going to be exciting. That's awesome, man. You know, just kind of, I know we're bouncing around a bit, but I know like in one of the interviews I saw, like neither of your parents are musical, right? No, I- I'm the only musician in the family who is a musician. <laughs> so where, like what? It's wild. Like, where does no aunts, uncles, no one? Well, does... my dad's saying is my 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 um. Well, a, a lot of pe- a lot of family on on my dad's side saying, um. Huh. But as far as playing instruments, um, I'm the only one in the family. <laughs> like, were your parents like, m- like just mesmerized? By, like when you first started playing, it just it kind of like out of yeah, nowhere. like. They were saying like, "Oh, who taught him how to play that?" <laughs> At three years old, um, you know, because um, no one taught me, you know, those no sweet rhymes, and I just taught myself. I just from just listening to them and just memorizing them and playing with both hands. You know, in, in that sixty minutes interview, they you, you there was like a doctor who was doing research just to try to like figure out how like elite musicians are you know are able to play at the level like you know that you do and they did like an M- they did an mri yes study and like one of the studies was like it was like that scene from ferris bueller where like the teacher's like you know bueller bueller you know and yeah. like your, your your brain is basically shut off and then like when you're this music it's like your entire brain like even like visual cortex like yeah parts of your brain that are used to that people with sight use you're using that to process the music. Are you seeing music inside your head, like when you're playing? No, it's not my synesthesia type thing. Um, but still, though, like it's it's really cool how I use my visual cortex. Like I still can't believe it. <laughs> like, it's how ama- is that possible? It's actually amazing. Yeah, I, actually, I'm gonna try to get that visual. We'll put it on the podcast. It's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor, so like that kind of stuff always always fascinates me. Well, there you me. go. Um, but it was it's really really wild. It was like you're literally using like 90 percent of your brain when you make music where it's like other people probably use like 20% of their brain when they're making music, which, you know, helps to explain why you're so damn good. Oh, thanks. Um, so what's next, man? Well, um, finishing up Juilliard, uh, my third year and, uh, going on tour, (laughs) really. Um, and, um, whatever else God, you know, says, you know, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that, you know, I've been blessed to be, yeah, you know, to be performing and recording and doing other things, and I can't wait for what's happening next. Any jazz is jazz fest happening this year? Uh, which one? <laughs> New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans Jazz Festival. Um, good question. I hope so. I would love to go back there. Yeah, you played last. You played last year, right? In jazz. Fest? Uh. Three years ago, I want to oh, say. Pre pre COVID. So pre COVID, yes. Yeah. Maybe there was wow. a Yeah, I will be at the Monday Jazz Festival, though, uh, in oh, September. Amazing. Awesome, man. That's amazing. Hey, Matthew, I can tell, I can tell, man, you got a lot going on, man. Uh, I don't want to keep you from your studies. Uh, but thank you so much, man, for sharing part of your journey with us, man. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's an honor to get to, it's an honor to meet you. I'm a huge fan. And uh, I hope lots of folks will come see you live, man, when you're on tour. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. 
All right, man. Well, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon, man. You too. All right.